Okay, here we are with number 13, right? Almost halfway through the multiple choice section. Uh, 13 is actually a very, um, it's quite difficult for, for uh, some of my students who have tried this. Um, the problem is, and now uh, let me write this out, of A plus AR equals B plus R. Okay. Uh, one difficult, one difficult part is actually getting the A's together, right? How can I combine A and A R? Right? I can't really separate the A R. It's kind of difficult. So, if you you're actually good at factoring, you can actually factor an A out of A plus A R. They both have an A in common. You can actually take out the A, and what's left is one plus R, right? Because A times one is A, A times R is A R. Now it's equal to B plus R on the other side. And now to, uh, to get A by itself, just divide by 1 plus R. This will cancel. Divide by 1 plus R on the other side, and that's your answer. A equals B plus R divided by 1 plus R. Choice 3. Okay, 14. Uh, we're solving for x here. And uh, one way you can do it if you happen to forget the math is actually take the different choices here because it's multiple choice. Take the different solutions, plug it in for x, and see which one works. All right? And that tends to be a, a, a nice little trick to, uh, to uh, work out and actually get the correct answer if you happen to forget to actually do the math. Okay? But if you want to solve this correctly, let's write this out. 4 over 3x plus... 5 is less than 17. Alright, we want to isolate the x, so let's move uh, these numbers around. Let's move the 5 first, we'll subtract 5. All right, we get 4 over 3, x is less than 12. Okay, now to move the 4 and 3, there's a couple ways of do it, doing it. You can either do it through one step or two step. And whatever you choose, if you want to do the quicker one step way, uh, you can just multiply by the reciprocal, which is 3 over 4, and multiply the other side also by 3 over 4. Okay. What happens is when you ever multiply by the reciprocal, it always cancels out to 1. So 3 will cancel out with 3 here, 4 will cancel out with 4, you're left with just x is less than 12 times 3 which is 36 divided by 4. So x is less than 9. Okay. x is less than 9. Right? Hear that one more time for me. x is less than 9. Okay, a lot of people would, would think automatically it's choice 2. But again, I'm looking for x is less than 9. A number less than 9 is actually the answer is choice 1, which is 8. Okay. If you actually use a 9 and plug it in, right, you'll get the same number. Plug in 9, you get 17 is less than 17, and that's not true. All right, the correct answer is 8. It's 8 when you plug it in, and you'll get a number less than 17. Okay, number 15, the box and whisker plot over here uh, represents student scores on the English test. The question is, what is the value of the upper quartile? Uh, just a quick reminder, if you don't remember, uh, the lowest point is a minimum. Right, and the highest point is maximum. Uh, the first note here, this is the actually lower quartile. Right, this is your median. And upper quartile is just right here, which is around 80. Let me see, what is that? 90s over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's around 84. Okay? So that is choice 3. Number 16. Which value of n makes the expression undefined? Right? Key word here is undefined. What does undefined mean? Well, undefined means that um, uh, when you put in the calculator, you actually get an error that comes out of your calculator, right? It's uh, in other words, um, 
undefined means the bottom part, the denominator, needs to be equal to zero. Because when the denominator is equal to zero, you put in a calculator, it's going to give you error, right? It's undefined. So how do we find out what is n that makes it zero? We'll take the bottom part, 2n minus 1, and set it equal to zero. Now, what about the 5n? Well, we don't care about the 5n. 5n does not play a factor in this equation. I just crossed that, crossed that out. Right, what matters is the bottom or denominator. Okay, solve for n. Add one to both sides, and we get 2n equals 1. Now just divide by 2. All right, and there you have it. N equals 1 half. And that is choice 4. Right? Numeral quattro. All right. All right, number 17. Okay, this question is going to take a while. It's a lot of reading here. Well, we'll take a slow. All right, we'll do this together. Okay. All right, there's four classes here. There's freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. But let's use symbols to represent them. All right, freshman class, uh, let's just use the letter F. Freshmen will be F. All right, next comes sophomore. Well, what does it say about sophomore? The sophomore class is 60 more students than the freshman class. Well, 60 more students just means F plus 60, right? Freshman class plus 60. Right? The junior class, and it says over here, has 50 fewer students than twice the students in the freshman class. Right? So 50 fewer, that means we're going to subtract, and twice uh, uh, the freshman class, well, that's 2F right? minus 50. Then we have the senior class, and it says the senior class is three times as large as the freshman, so that's three times F. Right? And there we have our legend. And in total, right, there is a total of 1,424 students. Okay, that is total. Okay, let's set this into an equation. Well, if we know the makeup of the school or the entire total is going to be a combination of freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. Then we can add all these four grades together. Right? So we have F freshman class, and we're adding the sophomore class, which is F plus 60. And then we're adding the juniors, 2F minus 50. Right? Adding the seniors, 3F, and that's equal to 1,424. And let's combine like terms. We have a lot of F's there. Count how many F's, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven F, right? And then we also have a 60 minus a 50. So that is 10 equals one, four, two, four. And let's subtract that 10, right? To isolate the F here. We have 7F equals 1,414, right? Divide by 7, and we're almost there, right? A few more seconds. And that'll give you F equals 202 students, and that's your freshman class. Go back up, look at the choices. That is choice one. There you have it.